Last month, the Biden administration released new Title IX rules that prevent schools from enforcing policies that ban biological males from competing in female sports. The Department of Education's proposed amendments to Title IX also allows the federal government to investigate and withhold funding from schools that violate the rule. This comes even as an increasing number of prominent female athletes and commentators are speaking out in defense of female sports. Joining me now to discuss all of it is FRC Senior Fellow for Education Studies, Meg Kilgannon. Meg, good to see you today. Great to see you, Joseph. Now, you've had a chance to peruse these proposed rule changes. What is the Biden administration trying to do? Well, they're sending a very large signal to women that um, our experiences in sports are not important to them and that the whole idea of Title IX as a concept um, of protecting the rights of women and men based on biological sex, now we have to, according to the Biden administration, view this through the paradigm of uh, gender identity. And so if a woman can prove that it's educationally necessary, and if she can prove that it does not hurt the quote unquote transgender athletes, then maybe the Department of Education would approve a rule that would allow women to have sports just for themselves. So this is a this is a huge setback. This is not a progressive policy. This is a regressive policy. Now, you just hinted at a couple of exceptions that perhaps exist in these rules. If there's some kind of burden of proof on a school uh, to prove no harm if they want to have female-only sports, what would that burden right. of proof require? Well, your your guess is as good as mine. I mean, you'd have to try to, to imagine the feelings of, of a, a, a transgender student athlete to uh, ensure that they aren't hurt, I guess. Um, it, it's really... Um, the interesting thing is that the the groups that are uh, promoting transgender rights, quote unquote, are very upset about these rules because they feel like that there there's too much deference given to women in these rules, <laughs> which is just unbelievable. But um, the I think because there is some pushback from both sides on this issue, people who understand that biology is real and people who want to just imagine themselves to be anything and participate and have no limits in society whatsoever based on their own delusions. Um, the fact that both of the sides of the debate are upset that this is somehow some magical middle ground, and that's not the case at all. Uh, it's just the, 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 that tiny sliver of opportunity that maybe the women could prove some necessity of having our own categories of sport, um, that even that is too much for the, the transgender community. Now, Meg, I'm going to ask a question that might seem cynical, but I don't think anything is too cynical these days. Is there a point at which this transgender lobby attempts to just repeal Title IX entirely? Because is this, have we just gotten to the point where it's obsolete, it no longer has any purpose because anybody can be anything they want? Well, I think in this case, the the purpose of it is that it... Um, if the way the Biden administration is imagining it, that it is only for transgender or sexual minority groups in this in this idea, um, in, in their imagining of it, that they, the extension of civil rights to include sexual identities um, it is to, necessary. You must use Title IX as a wedge to enforce this on people. And so um, while it makes Title IX meaningless is the way we've always understood it, and was I, I'm sure that we could all agree that in 1972, when this was passed by Congress, no one had any idea that anyone would ever interpret sex to mean something other than male or female. This, these are the, <laughs> the way that God created us. This is the binary category that is sex. And so the fact that the Biden administration is now interpreting it this way is it does make it ridiculous. But I, I think that they must keep the rules so that they can enforce this on everyone. I think that's actually a helpful way to think about the change that has taken place. We once understood Title IX to be something to help females. Now we should understand, at least from a progressive perspective, Title IX is something to help men who think they are females. And so it still actually would serve a fundamental purpose for them. There's just a new group that it is being used on behalf of. But 
the the headline here is that they want to threaten schools who would try to maintain female only male only athletic competition what are the risks for schools who might try to do that well they would be um at risk of losing their federal funding and um in counties like where i live in fairfax and probably where you live um the school systems there are funded by property taxes and um, not, not a huge sliver of our budget comes from the federal government, but many of the poorest areas in the nation have a large portion of their school budget that is funded through Title I grants and other grants. And so the fact that they want to impose this ideology and put at risk the schools who need federal support the most is really, really obnoxious. Now, we've seen this play run in the last several months under the Biden administration. They threatened to defund a lunch program in Tampa Bay, I recall. Um, and when the school asserted its First Amendment privilege, I believe that was a, a Christian school that they initially thre threatened to defund the lunch program. The Biden administration actually revoked their decision, realizing it was kind of cruel to say, we don't agree with you, so we're going to starve children, essentially, right. is what their position was. Is there any chance that something similar would happen here, that they're just kind of trying to talk a big game, but they're not actually going to cut funding for education because the public wouldn't tolerate it? I, I, you know, if your logic would hold, then they wouldn't propose this rule at all, right? If they, if they had any, if they had any idea that there was a limit to their ideas, then they wouldn't make this change to Title IX because they already released a rule last last June, uh, a notice of proposed rulemaking about the bulk of Title IX, which covered a lot more areas than just this narrow part of sports. And that comment period is over, but but the that certainly implicated sports. But they have gone to the extra step of making this rule on sports, and so I think they're quite committed to this. And I think they are determined that we will all come to understand the rightness of their thinking, and that we will all comply <laughs> with this. That is that they are yeah. an authoritarian regime, and you know the beatings will continue until yeah. morale improves. Kind of an attitude, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So yeah. I I think they are going all out for this. It's in the Biden campaign ads that are being run so far. This is this is their bread and butter are the sexuality issues. And so they are going to yeah. absolutely move forward on this. Uh, we cannot reasonably for, for all of us yeah. and probably for them. We cannot reasonably question their commitment to their perspective. For us, though, we have to decide whether we have as much commitment to the truth as they have to the lie, because they are very convicted. Now, Meg, with this particular rule that we're discussing right now, has to do with uh, sports competition. Any other implications for this rule, or is it narrowly focused on sports? This particular part of the rule is narrowly focused on sports, and, and there is a comment period that is open for this rule right now that ends on May 15th. So we hope that people will go to frcaction.org slash protect girls sports. And Tell the tell the government what you think about this rule. Let the Biden administration know that you do think that women should have uh, the right to have sex protected, <laughs> female protected categories of sport, uh, and that um, the idea that everything should be seen through the lens of gender is is just wrong. Meg, we continue to see examples of female athletes, past and present who are speaking out against this, do you think that is having an impact on how the, the culture is feeling about the issue? I do think so. I think that people were willing to go along somewhat with this in the early stages when it was still sort of an imaginary situation and, and the left could credibly say, well, this doesn't happen. There aren't any girls who are being denied opportunities based on this. Um, but now people are seeing what this is like. They're seeing um, many, many sports having male-bodied athletes competing against women and, and girls, and those girls and women losing out, um, losing out on monetary prizes, losing out on scholarship opportunities. And so I do think that, um, that the real harms that people are seeing because of this ideology and just the fact that it's not true, <laughs> that it is not real, um, you know, at some point, there there has to be uh, a, a limit to how far this can go. Meg, so, before I let you go, remind people it. where remind people where they can go to leave a comment about this. 
at, at www.frcaction.org slash protect girls sports. Thank you again. And thanks so much for your time. Thank you.